Hey, what's going on guys? Dr. John Russin here, and I am in Seattle at the legendary Bigger Ground Fitness with my man, Luca Hosevar. We have the opportunity to listen to one of the people that I respect most in this industry, somebody that I've literally been learning from for five years at this point, and somebody who's hosted me three different events, extremely successful events, extremely successful gym business, ex success across the board. We're gonna keep this short and sweet because that's gonna be oh, tough man. for you, man. That's gonna be very difficult. You, we're said, gonna be, you said 20 minutes. 20 I minutes. Sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna keep this short and sweet because I wanna ask Luca about what I think he is best at in the industry. And that's a hard thing to do because you're running a brick and mortar, you're running online businesses, you're doing events, you're doing conferences, real estate, you're doing everything under the sun right now. But what I think you're best at is being a fucking leader. You lead wherever you are, you've always led, and when you talk and have a conversation with you, I don't know what you're saying, but I wanna get behind <laughs> you and I want to do it. For fitness professionals in the field, you know, where does that leadership start? Does it start with getting in and getting education, or does it start with something within? I'll start, I'll start here, right? Number one is that one of the books that we give uh, our team that's during the internship process, that's like part of the curriculum, is called um, Leader With No Title from Robin Sharma, which is a great book. But the whole premise of it is this, right? I think people believe, you know, or think sometimes that leadership is like, oh, well, you know, there's these set of things that you gotta do to become a leader, and there's these, you know, prerequisites. Yeah. But, you know, leadership is really just like how you behave. Like leadership is taking action. Like you can be a leader today, right? Does that mean that you're gonna be, you know, uh, I don't know, Tony Robbins or become a Barack Obama because you did it? Like, you know, probably not. But hey, can you take, can you take a, a can you create a, can you do a leadership behavior today? Absolutely, you know, how can it, it can start? You come into the gym, you're not Luca who, you know, owns the gym, whatever it may be, and there's a bunch of, you know, I would say dirt or stuff on the floor, and you're like, man, that, that just looks out of whack. You know, we got a class coming in in 15 minutes. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna vacuum this up. Now, you're not on, you know, it, it's not your chore today. Uh, it's, you know, it's not mandatory. Uh, it's not like part of your job requirement on the job description when you put it out there. But man, you, you were like, you know what? That's the right thing to do, right? That's, and the thing is, is like, if your mission, think about what we do, and we talked about this at your event, right? Like, what we do is like, we're helping people go, like, you know, what, is, what does coach mean? Coach means take a person from where they are to where they want to be. Build muscle, lose weight, get out of pain, improve performance, improve their life. So if our mission is that, like what are the things that are gonna help that, you know, a person do that without, without like, hey listen man, you gotta do this, right? But just, just going and doing it because you know it's the right thing to do and like leadership starts there. So you can be an intern, you know what, and, and have leadership actions and when you keep doing those leadership actions, then what ends up happening is that like, essentially people over time call you a leader, right? right? So I, I think it begins there. It's like more of a philosophy that you don't wait for other people to give you this, this title of, of leader. You just, you take, you, you have behaviors that do that. Stay the extra 10 minutes to talk to Susie Sue about her nutrition, even right. though that wasn't part of the deal because she's part of a group class and that's not even what, you know, she's paying for, right? Like coming and somebody gets sick and you're like, oh shit, you know what, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll come in on a Sunday and jump in and, and, and take Theo's class because he couldn't do it. Man, and I could keep going on and on and on about these things, right? Now, for a business owner, and let me reframe that for people, that business owner is, if you're working for somebody else right now, like, man, you're a business owner. You're the business of you, right? Like, if you're, um, you know, in a, in a big box gym, man, don't, don't think about, like, well, you know, LA Fitness is not doing X, Y, Z. Nah, man, it's, it's you, yeah. right? So to, to first understand that, like, you are a person that, that is an entrepreneur wherever you're at. So even for my coaches, I'm like, hey, look, like you guys are operating, we're, we're a team, we're us, right? But you're still the business of you in a sense, like you can't point fingers at people, you know what I mean? Right. Like you have to take responsibility for your actions. Um, and I, I think, you know, one of the greatest virtues in, in, uh, in life period is resilience, you know? And I always say, hey, you know what resilience is? It's first taking 100% responsibility for your life and your actions and everything that you do. And, and so, you know, for me teaching the team that um, it's crucial and like helping them understand like, hey, listen, like you're a leader, 
when you have these behaviors. Right. Now, it does start, like the way I look at it is, you know, top down but bottom up, mm -hmm. right? Um, and like, I'll, first I'll preframe this. I fucked up a lot of stuff, um, you know, in, in, in the years like learning this stuff, you know, cause um, as, you know, I don't, I don't come from a background of necessarily where a lot of these things were taught to me, you know, and, um, and so I had to learn and had to study and, you know, go to courses, read a ton of books and so on and so forth. And, certainly uh, learn from the mistakes because once you have a team, you know, you really start learning right. leadership and management and things like that. And I say it's, it's really easy, you know, now when I, I do so much business coaching, people want the, hey, what, what, what ad is working? What's the strategy? Like, what's the thing? What's the deal? And, you know, after all these years, I keep coming back to this, you know, about like, man, how do you guys operate? You know, and that is values. And, that is leadership. Now, it's st what I say by top down, bottom up is this, okay? Um, there's a great analogy from that Danny Meyer, uh, I, I would say got from Danny Meyer, and a mentor of his when he was running restaurants. And he said, hey, um, listen, they were sitting down, and he's like, man, I feel like, Danny Meyer said, I feel like my staff is constantly pushing my buttons, right? They're constantly trying to test me, right? Like, because, uh, and at that point in time, he was younger than even some of his servers, right, as a restaurant owner. And he was like, it was always, they're always testing me, right? And his mentor said, they're sitting at a table, he said, hey listen, take all the stuff off the other table, take the, the, the cloth off, the, the, the silverware, everything else, right? And he said, put the salt shaker in the middle of the table, right, and, and Danny Meyer puts the salt shaker in the middle of the table. And uh, the mentor goes, no, nah, it's not, not, not in the middle. And Danny Meyer, you know, moves it by like three inches, right? It's like, is that the middle? Yeah, that's, are you happy with that? Okay, cool, all right. And then he goes and he moves it. He's like, put it back in the middle. Puts it right back in the middle, right? And he keeps doing that. And he says, look Danny, see the middle of that table for that, for that salt shaker, that's what you want, that's excellence. That's how you want things to be done. Now a lot of times, you're, both your team and your clients they're gonna test you, that's what people do. Not consciously, a lot of times subconsciously. And they're gonna move that shaker. And it's not for you to get frustrated. What it is for you to do is put the shaker exactly where you want it to be, right? And when you keep doing that, what's gonna happen is other people are gonna realize that this is what we do. We put the shaker right in the middle, right? So you have to create the standards for excellence. Because if the shaker is, you know, if this is the middle, if the shaker is here, you know what, that's not excellent. Right. That, that might even, that's mediocrity, or I would even say possibly failure, right? But it starts from the top down, and you could, you could relay this into anything in the gym business, meaning, listen, what is the standard for cleanliness, right? Like last night I trained at, I don't know, like 9.30 p.m., you know what, then I vacuumed the whole gym, and I could be pissed off because, you know, a couple people maybe should have helped me out or whatnot, but you know what, I was like, the whole weekend, the whole weekend, I wanna give people an insight into what I saw you do. Not what you said you were doing, but what Luca actually did. Luca carried a dumbbell rack out to get his gym set. He carried a projector in by himself. He put up the fucking screen, he took out the trash, and he talked to every single one of the 85 people in this gym. Then he trained. <laughs> So simple actions, simple actions. Every single person at that seminar saw you do that shit. And you know what? That's the reason I respect you, because you not only talk it, you live it. But on top of talking it and living it, you're actually sharing it with your other coaches as well. You're developing human beings here. You know, I've had the pleasure to be here multiple years in a row, and I see some of your coaches, the way that they've flourished with your mentorship and I look at that as a key role in leadership as well. As a leader, do you make others better? This is, I see amazing transformations from the coaches that have been here in the three year period since I first gave that seminar. Unbelievable, and that's something I'm damn proud of you and them. And that's, that's, a, that's a great point. You said the word mentorship. Um, and, you know, and I think this is another kind of uh, sometimes almost limiting belief, you know, for, for any business owner, but let alone in the fitness industry, where you go like, well, this is a job, this is what they're supposed to do, and you know, this is the professional side of things, right? Where development, it is impossible to separate professional and personal. 
it's, you can't do it. Like I, I thought back in the day, it's like, oh no, no, listen, you know, your shit's your shit. When you come here, I'm coaching you to be the best in, in this profession. Yeah. Listen, you, you tell me like when somebody loses a, a friend or a family member, how that's gonna affect them at work. They're going through like tough stuff in their relationships. They're, uh, they're sick, they're injured, they're, they have money issues and stuff like that. Man, that affects every human being, right? So how do you just separate? First of all, if you, if you separate that and you don't care about that, how are you human, yeah. right? So you gotta, you gotta be human, you know what I mean? And like, I take vested interest in my team because, I mean, honestly, first, because I give a, I mean, I care, I give a fuck, you know what I mean? Then as, as a human being, cause, and, and that's the whole premise of empathy, right? It's really easy to get lost in like, how's the business doing? How much, okay, I wanna make a hundred grand more this year and put it in my pocket, like did it, but what about, you know what, what about my coach? Man, they're just getting started, man. Like, you know what, they need to make this to be pretty good. Man, I, like I, I get anxiety, like this positive anxiety around like, man, I gotta help them get there, right? It's not, it's, it's, about, it's about them, you know what I mean? And, and the whole bottom up too part of this is that, you know, like truly giving ownership, truly caring about each person. I think that's one of the things that's missing, right? And, you know, I would say I'm fortunate because I go around the country and, I mean, I consult a lot of gyms and, um, and I do a lot of speaking and, and I go in a lot of places and these conversations come out of scarcity. Like, man, Luca, like, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. I say, hey, tell me a little bit more, more about your coaches. Like, what, you know, what's, their, what's their vision? What's their dream? What, what do they wanna achieve? Like, what's, what's the money they wanna make? And it's just like, uh, like they, don't, they don't know, right? So think about this. It's, it's the, the client is the second most important, okay? And people will go like, what? What are you talking about? I said, listen, when you are the only person that's, that's coaching and that's, it's just you solo, the client's the most important person. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get a team, the team is the most important because the team coaches the clients, right? And the thing is, what a lot of business owners go is like, the client's the most important. Fucking the team's just gotta do what they gotta fucking do because that's their job description, like whatever, blah, blah, you know what I mean? And it's the craziest shit of all time when you think about it. Where the, like, the people that, are, treat, that are, are serving the clients aren't getting served themselves from a stamp, standpoint of continuing education. Um, and like, I mean, I, that's, I pride myself on that. I mean, you know that, I mean, it's, it's you know, this year, this, this was, we'll have 11 events, you know, 11 events at Vigor that are either um, seminars in staffs, you know, and more than 11 speakers, but like just 11 events, which is almost one a month, which is crazy, right? But next year we got six scheduled already. We're probably gonna have 12, you know, and because like I want to, challenge my team to be the best that they can be. And like, this is a, it's a big investment. It's an investment for me in, in I, whether it's time, energy, or money, it doesn't matter, right? It's all those. But then on the other side, like I wanna know about their fears and their doubts and their dreams and like what would an ideal life look like? And then I wanna tr gel those two together and go like, great, like I'm gonna help you get there and in, in line with how we get to where we wanna go, right? And, and, and the thing is, is like m most of the things is, I can't tell you how many people don't have like team meetings or instas, but more importantly too, like how many times do you sit down with your team, go to lunch, go to, and, and it's like even stuff like, you know, yesterday during the, uh, the break, you know, I go to brunch with Theo, you know, like uh, I'll schedule something with, with Jess and we just go to lunch. Or Mar like I'm always doing this. Now I'll say this, like I've dropped the ball in my life many times and learned from those things. But you know, when I look back at it now, I'm like, man, what, what was I thinking? So being invested in your people, like at a whole nother level is, is it's not even like, oh, this is great. Like it's crucial. If you don't do it, you will. And then people are like, man, the, 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 um, this is one of the myths. You've heard this before, right? I used to say, well, no one cares as much as I do, right? And so the thing is, they don't maybe care as much as you do about the thing that you do, but they care about as something as much as you do, yeah. right? You care about this thing. So how can you align those things? That means you gotta listen more, you gotta communicate more, you gotta be more vulnerable, you know, and, and meaning that like, you know, not just being the boss, like do this, do that, like this is what it's supposed to be like. Um, and that's a whole set of skill sets that you have to learn that maybe, you know, that, that I think not enough push is happening in, in, in telling people, or should I say guiding people, like hey listen, have you, you know, have you learned more leadership and management skills? You know, have you, um, have you done any type of motivational interviewing? Have you, uh, have you gone into a course, a three, four day course where they teach you how to better communicate with your team, right? And share things and like, man, I say, I say, I don't know a lot. I say, guys, would you help me? You know, uh, I would say the, the whole leaders uh, eat last philosophy. Yeah. Hey, we got this problem here. Um, 
what would you guys do? I'm not even gonna bring shit up until it lasts, you know? And so I think those are all like really, really important factors uh, when it comes to leadership. It's like top down, bottom up, but like, man, I'll tell you what, if you do not live the things that you're asking your people to do, it, that is, everything else is irrelevant. Every checklist, every strategy, every, um, you know, every marketing campaign and plot and reorganization is it, irrelevant. You, you, you want the place clean, but you walk by when everything's shitty. You know, you tell people like, hey, listen, you gotta treat your members and, and your clients, like you, you gotta treat them awesome. But then I'm the person that's not, never saying hi, high-fiving, talking to people, spending time, sending flowers when, you know, somebody passes. Like, if you're not living that, like how do you expect the people that are on your team to do the same? It's impossible. So it starts with self-evaluation, like really, really checking yourself, you know? And that is hard, man. That is, it's hard to go look in the mirror and say, man, fuck, I'm not doing this, <laughs> right? It is. And, you know, to change culture is not like a, a detox, you know what I mean? Like we're gonna do it in 28 days, you know, we're gonna do it in 12 weeks, right? Like, man, changing culture might take a year, two years. Maybe it's less, but you gotta commit to it and do it like really, really, you know, long-term and stuff. So um, this analogy of the light bulb on the moth, right? Like every business um, essentially wants to shine bright and attract as many moths as possible. So think getting people through the door so you can help them with whatever your goal is. Um, and, but there's two functionalities to that light bulb and people just think about the brightness and the attracting, okay? But the second one is the warmth of it so that the moths stay around, right? And this is the, what, what, what Danny Meyer calls 4951, right? And 49, think of it this way, if you are the best tactically, meaning program design, um, you know, periodization, internal, external cues, movement pattern, like all of like, co and then things, there's a lot of things that go around coaching, excess and those of nutrition, right? Like we could lay them out and you go like, man, this guy knows so much and he can like tactically take this person from here to here, fucking all day long, right? And you're excellent at that. That would, that would only give you 49 out of the 100 points. The other 51 is how much you care about people, right? And that you're fulfilled. So that's the warmth, right? The, the 49 is like, hey, that's the, the, the shine of the bulb. The 51 though, the more, even more important part is the warmth of it. How do you keep people around because you care? Like you literally are fulfilled by helping that person out. It's not like, Right, we, we're churning, we're churning. How, we need 14 more people because that's going to give us this many thousands of dollars. Uh, okay, wh who are the people that join? Why did that lady join? I don't know. Let's just, you turn it on the ads, let's roll. Let's, you know, like, and so the, the, the reality is that that 49 uh, can be taught, meaning if, if, if you're a hard worker, you have a work ethic, you're curious, um, you know, you're a team player, that 49 can be developed. The 51, it, it can be, yeah. but much more difficult and my recommendation today is hire for the 51, train the 49, right? And, and uh, because it does become difficult, you know, when, when you, this is a service industry. A lot of people, so, you know, industries are service, but if there's one that's more service oriented than almost anything, man, it's, it's this one. And, and I'm sure that, you know, this, is, this quote has been overplayed, you know, people don't, how much, uh, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And, and we have the Maya Angelou quote, which is one of my favorite in the world, right? People don't, uh, will forget what you said, forget what you did, but never forget how you made them feel. Right. And that is a foundational thing because, man, honestly, like for majority of people that come through, you know, they're, they're not gonna, they're gonna be like, man, that, that coach's awesome. Like they lift me up, they guide me, they support me. Uh, I always feel good, I feel empowered, you know? So they're usually not gonna go like, man, the way that they teach that deadlift is phenomenal. <laughs> Uh, now, the thing is, they may, that, that's a puzzle, that's part of it, for sure, right? Like, I, there's a lot of people that go like, man, like, I love how much care they take in the way that they coach and understanding it and always learning. But if you know all that stuff and you're just cold and just, the person is like, oh man, this, I'm just a number. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, you know, yeah, yeah, sure, they really know their stuff and they can get me results, but I'm just a number, right? Game over. And, you know, PN, uh, did these, um, these uh, I would say they, they did kind of like started researching marketing for why some things are working, why some things aren't working um, with, with a, a process called jobs to be done, which we actually, you know, have used before too. And what they found out was that like one, one specific person that was in one of their programs uh, was in one of the forums saying like, hey, uh, 
somebody said, hey, well, how did you like that program? You know, ah, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't get what I wanted out of it. Like, I don't recommend it. Hmm. And the conversation kept going. And the lady said, well, yeah, I lost 55 or 60 pounds. Hold up. You lost 55 and 60 pounds, but you did, don't recommend the program. Hmm. You didn't get what you wanted out of it. Right? And that made them like, it was a red flag. Like, so they dug deeper, they dug deeper, they dug deeper. And what they found out, there was a lot of people like that. Yeah. And that person, their primary goal was to be taken care of and supported and, and to be guided. The side effects of that are the, the weight loss, yeah. right? And so even though they got weight loss, they didn't feel like that company did their job. Think about that, that's fucking crazy, right? Like they lost 60 pounds, like no, nah, that wasn't a good result. But, it's the, but it shows you the power of, yeah. <laughs> it shows, shows you the power of how important that part is, right? So I, you know, I, I would say that, I'd finish with that, that are you studying customer service, customer experience, communication, you know, as much as you are studying everything else if it's, you own a business? It's pivotal, man. Not a whole lot of people know this, but I didn't do a sports performance <laughs> dissertation for a doctorate. I wasn't doing ACL rehab. Do you know what my dissertation was about? It was about the perceived quality of life of patients going in and having diabetic foot ulceration at risk of losing their toes, their foot, or their lower leg. Physical therapists went in and they administered oxygenation therapy for diabetic wound ulceration. Mm -hmm. They stayed there for 30 minutes or they didn't stay there for 30 minutes. So they just bullshitted with the people. Hey, what we showed was that subjective, hey man, this is going to be better, my quality of life is actually better, had nothing to do if somebody had their toes or their ankle or their lower leg literally chopped the fuck off. They thought their quality of life was higher if they had three times a week for 30 minutes of interaction with their therapist. That's mind blowing. Right? It's mind, mind, mind blowing stuff. I spent two years on that and nobody could believe it. You know, I'm not into diabetic wound ulceration yeah, therapies yeah. or anything like that. But what that showed me in a two year period was how you make somebody feel matters. Human connection matters. Even if somebody is having an amputation, they care more about the way that they felt than actually having that limb. Which is Unbelievable stuff. I, I wanna end one more spot. Mm -hmm. Leadership in this industry, how much of it is about sacrifice? Because I see what you've done here. You have 11,000 square feet now. You bought a fucking building. You did that not only for yourself, but you did it for the community. You did it for the team. I remember being here at the opening and your team, they were ecstatic to have this new spot. They earned it, you earned it. You really made it happen. There's a lot of sacrifice to go into that. People see this facility and they go, wow, Luca, you made it, man. But you sacrificed a lot to put this building up. Talk a little bit about that. Every, everything, everything in life, uh has a price, you know? And well, I, you know what I say, it's like it has a price and has a requirement, right? And to give you an example, you wanna deadlift 500 pounds, right? Maybe right now the best you can get is 200. You don't have what's required and that's okay. You're gonna do the work and it's one day, if you do the work, if you do all the things required, you will deadlift 500 pounds, right? Works the same way here, right? What, you know, what are the requirements to get to a place where you can um, invest in, in, in a, such a significant, you know, multi-million dollar project and have the down payments and the, I mean, you know, that's probably a whole week long seminar we could do on, on things like that. But what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I had a vision and, and I talk about that. Like, you know, if you gotta see something and have a, what Gary Vee calls, you know, clouds and dirt, right? Like, the cloud is the vision, the cloud is the North Star, man. Like, what's my North Star? What I wanna build? And the dirt is the work. That's the price you gotta pay, that's the requirement. And, you know, the requirement to, to do something like this is a lot of times more than some people are willing to do or choose to do, because it, it is a decision, right? And um, I, I like to share the, the hardship because I hate, you know, like yesterday when we were doing a Q&A with Joel, and <laughs> Joel was like, 
the most motivation, un unmotivational motivational speaker. Because, but no, but the thing is, that he, uh, to me, that, you know, he, he said a, a lot of great things because it's like, now nah, listen, this is what it fucking takes. Accept it, like accept how hard it is because when you do, you know what, you made a decision that, that this is what you're gonna do. Yeah. So if you're, if, you're starting, like if you're starting a gym and you're like, man, I'm gonna do nine, 10 hours a day for the first couple of years, good luck. Man. Just, they're, they're, the require, like well, maybe you could pull it off, but do you, are you willing to do 16? Are you willing to do 14? Because that's what it takes sometimes. Because you gotta learn so many things. And remember, there's, there's coaching and there's the business of coaching. Two different things. You could be an exceptional coach, but don't know sales, marketing, systems, fulfillment, leadership, right? Like, and you gotta learn that. And honestly, like in business, it's like this. If you, do, to, to a certain degree, don't wanna learn those things, you won't be successful. I'm gonna leave you with this story. I've actually never told you this story. In 2013, the first time I saw your name the first time I heard your voice was on Jay Ferrugia's podcast. It's on the Renegade Radio. And I remember sitting in my house with my headphones on, Maddie's running around, Lindsay's doing work on the computer. I remember taking my headphones out after 45 minutes, and I said, Lindsay, I need to find a way to get around this guy. Luca Hosevar, I don't know what he just said on that podcast, but the way he said it, the way he made me feel, I think my blood pressure is up at 200. And I was, I gotta get around this guy. It took me a year and a half to do it. But in that year and a half, I was on your site. I was listening to every podcast I could. Whatever you were doing on social media, I was reading. A year and a half later, we happened to sit next to each other at NorCal Fitness Summit at dinner, at a VIP dinner. I had a nice conversation and the rest was history. Yep. I mean, I look at somebody like you as a role model for me a year and a half before I even met you. But at that point in time, you know, you were the, one of the first ones to take FHT and go, some good shit. And you did it with your team, and your team said it was some good shit. And you actually talked about it organically. You were the, one of the first ones to bring me in for seminars three years ago. We just ran the biggest seminar pain-free performance training has ever seen here but it all started with the way you made me fucking feel through iTunes five years ago. That's, that's fucking awesome, dude. Unbelievable. That just puts a smile on my face, man. And it do it, and like seeing, like, you know what? There's nothing that makes me happier. Like being happy for people that are doing good shit. You know what I mean? To see like how much you've grown has been fucking nuts, dude. I mean, I, I, I know this is just, we, we're just getting started. We're all just getting started. That's my favorite, started. that's my favorite thing to say, you know? Oh my God, look at what, man, we're just getting started. Right, but dude, that's appreciate you sharing sharing that story with me, dude. That's that's dope. Nah, I appreciate everything. Awesome podcast as usual. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. We'll be back, and hope you guys enjoyed this one. See ya.